myself govin negrur i welcome you all for the video lecture series on the course named problem solving and programming in c in this session we will look into what are array of strings and see various c programs that use array of strings this is a part 5 of hands on session on arrays so without waiting further let's get started before we look into what are array of strings let us consider few scenarios wherein we are required to store names of students of a class in a variable we also would like to store all days of a week in a variable similarly we would like to store names of a year store names of telephone owners of a city so on and so forth for all the examples quoted there are many ways to store the textual data one of the simplest ways to store such textual data is to use array of strings we will now see the formal definition of array of strings in simpler terms an array of strings is a two dimensional character array we had learnt about one dimensional character array which is string in the previous video session so an array of strings is a two dimensional character array wherein each row of such a two dimensional array can be visualized as strings hence the name array of strings has been given to such an arrangement the concept of array of strings is very important it lets programmers store the textual data in a proper way as quoted before words in dictionary entries in directories hello pages are few of the examples of array of strings having seen the importance of array of strings let us try to represent array of strings formally this diagram shows the logical representation of array of strings here you can note the names is the name of a two dimensional character array wherein each row you can visualize this names as a 2d character array wherein each row represents one string so monday is a string which has been terminated with backslash 0 followed by tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday you can observe each row can be considered or visualized as a string and there are such seven strings so with this representation we can easily store all the seven days of a week however notice each row represents one string and each column of each row represents the number of characters in the string we need to remember that to store a string we need to add or the size of the string should be one greater than the actual number of characters in the string hence you can observe in the wednesday the backslash 0 occupies the last space so to be able to successfully store this entire 2d data we require seven rows and maximum 10 columns so we can easily create a two dimensional array called names whose first dimension is of 7 and second dimension is of 10 we will now see initialization of strings since strings are arrays and we have already seen the initialization of arrays there are two ways to initialize arrays similarly even array of strings have two ways of initialization of arrays the first one is compile time initialization of array of strings the syntax goes like this in fact there are two ways to provide compile time initialization of array of strings the first one that is shown here is the easy approach to specify values to array of strings here i have taken days as a two dimensional character array first row or first dimension represents the number of strings that are present in this data and second dimension represents the maximum number of columns that a particular or a single string can have since wednesday has nine characters and i need to represent or allocate backslash 0 also as a end of character for the strings i have taken 10 as the maximum number of characters within each string so first dimension represents the how many strings are there in this array of strings and second dimension represents how many characters are available for each string so this is one way of representation which is easy approach there is a cumbersome or complex approach for specifying compile time initialization of array of strings which is shown here you can observe where in in this approach each string is specified as a separate character and each character of the string is specified with a pair of single quotes and commas are separated to specify the characters and each string is ended with an explicit backslash zero so this is the norm if you are using the second approach it is your responsibility to specify backslash zero 
and also complete the string with the proper flower braces in the first approach you just need to use double quote and since you are using string constant you need not have to include backslash zero at the end we will now see the runtime initialization of array of strings as we have discussed with strings there are two ways to specify runtime initialization of strings same way here also we have two ways of specifying runtime initialization of array of strings the first one is using scanf here suppose i want to read the number of days of a week from the user i can use a for loop and use scanf and use percentage s as a format specifier to read each string however you can observe here in scanf i am only using the first dimension because each string is considered as one row so i just need to read one string and store it in that particular row so i'll start from i equal to 0 navigate till i reaches 6 so from 0th index position to 6th index i'll be storing all the days of a week in this two dimensional character array or array of strings i can also use get s to achieve this result the difference between scanf and get s has already been discussed in the previous video and the difference is with get s it lets us to specify spaces also as a array of strings we will be now writing a c program to read a list of names and display them on the screen as usual i'll be demonstrating this program in fedora operating system and now in fedora operating system i will now write the program to initialize the string using runtime initialization technique for this i require a two dimensional character array variables so i am name it i am going to name it as days as seen in the slide i am going to read seven strings and each string will have maximum nine characters and including it is 10 i need to read each string a variable called i next i'll enter from the user enter days of the week for i equal to 0 i less than 7 i plus plus first i'll demonstrate this with scanf percentages days of i so in each iteration one string is read using the scanf once having read all the seven days of the week i can now print it printf seven days of the week r again i can use a for loop i plus plus i can use printf percentage s backslash n days of i return zero end main compile it run it i now enter seven days of the week monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday you can now see it is printing the seven days of the week so what we have done in this case is we are now able to successfully store the array of strings in a two dimensional character variable and then print it properly i'll now modify the code and then show you how can this be done quickly with using get s and for using get s we need to include string dot h header file rest all the code remains and get s doesn't have format specifier percentage s it only has the name of the variable similar to get s you can use putf instead of printf so scanf and printf are the counterparts get s and putf are the counterparts you can compile it again it gives a warning i can neglect the warning i'll now enter all the days of the week wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday you can now see it is printed properly like this you can use any data any textual data to read it into a variable and then be able to process it i have also written the program that initializes the string using compile time initialization technique so let us have a look into it i have named it as read underscore string phi dot c you can look over here this is this was the first type of compile time initialization technique to initialize the strings and this is the second type 
I have painstakingly, painstakingly take, typed this code because as told earlier, this is the most complex way of writing or initializing the strings using compile time initialization technique. Now I'll try to print the output first for the first variable called days wherein d is small and second output is from d days which is d capital. So both output should be printed as same. So this would prove the fact that both the compile time initialization techniques are one and the same. Let us compile this, run it. You can see after output one, it has printed seven days of the week. Even after output two, it has printed seven days of the week. So this proves the fact that both the techniques are one and the same. However, the first technique to use double quotes to specify the strings is for far more easier and also efficient. Second technique is far more cumbersome and requires a lot of typing from the user. Having said this, we have also noticed in the previous video sessions that if you are specifying the compile time initialization technique, you need not specify the size of the array. So in this, we'll try to delete both the size or days variable let us see what happens when i compile this i'll clear the screen when i compile this what you see is you are getting a compile time error so this this is a compiler error so you cannot ignore it so the output file would not have been generated so i need to look into this line number five and column number seven so let me open the code again and go to the line number five so this is line number five you can see here this is line number five and i need to go to the column number seven so you can clearly see here it is showing me that the problem is in the declaration of variable called days so what is the problem is the syntax for compile time initialization in case of two dimensional arrays is you cannot omit both the index values or both the size values so let me try to introduce the first size value and see whether this works I'll again compile this. You can see the error is still there. The reason is you can optionally omit the first dimensional size, but you cannot omit the second dimensional size. This is because it has to know how many characters are there in each string as the maximum and number of strings are already available or mentioned by the user in this form. Hence the first dimension the size of it is optional with with respect to compile time initialization technique however the second size is mandatory so let us see what happens when i specify the size as the second dimension i can now see it got compiled and also it runs so this is applicable for two dimensional arrays on integers and doubles so we had seen various programs on matrices this is applicable for such two dimensional arrays also. We will now see one program on array of strings. We will try to write a C program to sort a list of names in ascending order. So in this program, we have a list of names available as array of strings and we are supposed to sort it in a ascending order. We will be using bubble sorting technique for doing this. The details of how bubble sort works and what is bubble sorting technique has been discussed in the previous videos you can have a look into it now the question is how do i sort a list of names we will understand this with the help of an animation so the animation will let us understand easily how to sort a list of names so we'll apply the same technique that was discussed in the previous video sessions on bubble sort and this time we'll try to sort array of strings also this animation requires us to remember the operations that we saw on strings like string compare and string copy operations. Let's get started. Let's assume that we have days of the week stored as separate strings of each row in a two dimensional array of strings. To start sorting, we have to consider bubble sorting technique and in each pass, we'll start to compare with the first element with the next element and next element with the next element. And we have observed to sort it in ascending order. If the first element is greater than the second element, we need to perform a swap. So let us see how this can be done. So we'll compare 
the first string which is monday with tuesday is monday greater than tuesday of course if you see the alphabetical order we have the capital m which comes first followed by t and m is obviously appearing alphabetically first after t so there is no need for a swap so obviously we'll check for the next comparison so now tuesday is compared with wednesday now you can observe t and w in the alphabetical ordering again t comes first followed by w so there is no swap now we are comparing wednesday with thursday you can see since wednesday comes later and thursday comes late afterwards so we need to perform a swap why it is so because t comes first followed by w so we need to swap the entire strings next compare wednesday with friday again there is a need for swap because f come first in the alphabetical ordering of english followed by w do i need to swap wednesday with saturday yes because w comes later followed by then comes the first comes the s followed by w again compare wednesday with sunday again we need to perform a swap so at the end of my first pass the highest string in this two dimensional array which is wednesday has bubbled down hence we are using bubble sorting technique so in the next pass i would not be touching upon this wednesday because this being the highest element first highest element in this array of strings has already bubbled down to the last position now again compare monday with tuesday is there a need for swap it is not then compare tuesday with thursday now you can observe both t are same so it will compare the next element which is u and h so u comes later and h comes first so thursday should move over to tuesday and tuesday should move over to the thursday so there is a need for a swap then compare tuesday with friday there will be a swap then compare tuesday with saturday there will be a swap then compare tuesday with sunday there will be a swap so this is the end of pass 2 because no need to compare tuesday with wednesday this is because wednesday is already fixed in the previous pass next you fix up with the tuesday and start with the third pass again compare monday with thursday no swap thursday with friday swap thursday with saturday swap thursday with sunday swap so this is the end of the pass 3 so you have fixed with the last three elements of the array next we start with pass 4 compare monday with friday swap monday with saturday no swap saturday with sunday no swap you can see here now sunday has bubbled down and has become the fourth largest element and has been situated properly in the next pass compare friday with monday no swap monday with saturday no swap this is done so saturday has been now bubbled down at the proper position next compare friday with monday no swap so you can see here there will be no seventh pass because the there will be only one element to available which is not fixed and you cannot compare that element with the already fixed element so this is how we got the result now we'll try to write a c program to implement this we will now try to write the program to sort a list of names i'll going to name it as sort_names.c include the necessary header files for performing string comparison i require strcmp so i'll include string.h header file i'll start with main i'll create one two dimensional character array or array of strings as names and specify around 10 size as well as 7 rows then to perform swap i require a temporary variable here it becomes this temperature temporary variable is again a string so the size of this will be 10 again then i required few variables like i j followed by n in my case n is 7 because i am considering days of a week 
later I will modify this program and make it generic printf enter days of week for i equal to 0 i less than 7 or n i plus plus scanf percentage s names of i now i'm going go ahead with bubble sorting technique the outermost for loop runs n minus 1 times so it is n minus 1 i plus plus and innermost for loop runs n minus i minus 1 times j plus plus then i need to compare the first element which is at the element jth position so compare strcmp names of j with names of j plus 1 and check whether it is greater than 0 so if it is greater than 0 first string is alphabetically higher than the second string so we need to swap it how do i perform swap i'll first copy the element at names of j into a temp so it should be temp equal to temp comma names of j followed by names of j and names of j plus 1 followed by names of j plus 1 comma temp so this is how you do copy the two strings you will not use equal to sign because it's not going to work so after this we'll print printf sorted list is so this list is sorted in ascending order let us see we'll use for loop i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus printf percentage s backslash n names of i return 0 compile it run it enter days of week monday tuesday thursday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday you can now see as we had seen it in the animation it has sorted it accordingly we can generalize this program for reading any strings any array of strings so instead of only fixing up with the names days of the week i can now make it generic so i'll increase this to say a maximum value of say 10 or 20 it means i can read 20 strings and let the size of each string be not more than 40 and since the number of size of the string is 40 i will also need to change this temp to 40 this time i will read the value of n from the user printf enter the value of n backslash n scanf percentage d ampersand n then i will have to enter enter percentage d strings comma n so i'll now write i equal to 0 i less than i plus plus so this will remain same so even rest of the program will remain the same let's compile this now i will enter the names of months in a year so i'll enter the value as 12 january february march may april may june july august september october november december you can now see it has sorted it according to the alphabetical order so this is as simple as that once you know any of the bubble sorting or one, once you know any of the sorting techniques you can easily apply the same thing for sorting array of strings having seen the program on array of strings i will now give you some suggested activity to try it out you can try writing a C program to sort a list of names in descending order. This should not be a problem because in the program, I have already shown you how to sort the list in ascending order. With one line modification, you can easily 
try to sort a list of names in descending order try it as a suggested activity next you can try writing a c program to sort a string in ascending order this program in fact doesn't require array of strings it is just a program on string so you you have to input one string and try to sort it in ascending order what do you mean by that i mean suppose you enter say monday as a string so in monday which is the character that comes first in the english alphabet a so once you sort it within the string a should come as a first character and also notice if you enter m as capital all the capital case ascii values are having lower number compared to small case so when you consider monday and when you sort it m should come first followed by a so this can easily be demonstrated here so assume that i have inputted this monday like this so when you sort it m will come first followed by a followed by d followed by n followed by o followed by y so this is what i mean by sorting a string in ascending order so you are sorting it within the string itself next you can try to write a c program to print the number of consonants vowels in a list of names so if when i enter say my name govin so you can just try to print how many vowels and how many consonants are there in a string this program asks you to do it on a list of names so you have such n names say consider days of a week or months of a year so in that in that entire list of names how many number of consonants uh, consonants and how many co number of vowels are there in the list of names you are supposed to print it so please try this as an activity we have now come to the end of this session on array of strings i hope you have enjoyed this session in the next session we will be seeing one of the most important concept of c called as pointers because of pointers c is very famous and has been very powerful language since from its inception in 1970s thank you have a nice day